So, what are we needing? <laughs>
saving all the seeds.
evening. My name is Jenna Gala, and I would like to thank you for coming to the Fieldstone Middle School graduation of 2017. To Dr. Peterson, Mrs. McCormack, Mr. Pellegrino, and the teachers and parents, your unwavering support throughout these past four years is deeply appreciated. Also, thank you to the graduates of 2017, who have worked diligently throughout our middle school years and are the reason we are gathered here today. The years that we have spent at Fieldstone have included many ups and downs, but have been fulfilling nonetheless. Friendships have formed, knowledge has been gained, and we have matured into the young adults we are today. From fifth grade orientation to eighth grade graduation, we have all watched each other grow and change. And even though our class is far from perfect, I am so thankful to have experienced middle school with such an exceptional group of individuals. As we observe herds of fifth graders stampede up the staircases, screaming wildly, we reminisce about how we were once standing in their shoes. Walking into Fieldstone on the first day of middle school was truly nerve-wracking. I envied the eighth graders who towered over us like giants as I could barely reach my top locker. Also, the responsibilities that came with fifth grade were certainly more abundant than those of elementary school, and several obligations were slightly intimidating. Having to remember our schedule, changing for gym, and memorizing our locker combinations were simply a few of the challenges that stood out to me as a 10-year-old. However, switching classes, sitting anywhere at lunch, and roaming the halls without having to walk in a line were some of the newfound freedoms of Fieldstone, and we were all appreciative of the opportunity to experience them. Though I could not possibly list all of the memories that have stuck with me throughout these past four years, there are a few that I would like to share. For starters, the sixth grade Olympics was probably the hardest I have ever endeavored in sports, and it's an event I will always keep in my mind. Additionally, the seventh grade trip to Quebec is my most prominent memory of last year, particularly because of the savory crepes and sweet maple syrup. Lastly, the memory I most associate with eighth grade is the three RCA marathon which took place in the beginning of school, but in my mind has always represented our last year at Fieldstone. This is because even though it was pouring rain and bitterly cold, we were all still laughing, singing, and splashing cups of water on each other, which goes to show that our class knows how to make the best out of any situation, and that we certainly know how to have a good time. As we prepare to say our final goodbyes to our teachers, friends, and school, there is one quote that I would like to share. Raul Dahl, a famous author, once wrote, And above all, watch with glittering eyes the whole world around you, because the greatest secrets are always hidden in the most unlikely places. Those who don't believe in magic will never find it. This line was printed on a poster in Mr. Jasper's fourth grade classroom and has always stayed with me. As we continue to take on new responsibilities, discover our passions, and find ourselves, I hope these words will stay with you. They remind us to never lose our childlike wonder and curiosity about the world, and to never stop questioning. The years ahead of us will undoubtedly be filled with tough choices and unfamiliar situations, but I trust that we will never stop searching for the magic in our lives. Thank you to everyone, and good luck to all of us Falcons in high school. Thank you, Jenna. Good evening again. My name is Gina McCormack. I'm the principal of Fieldstone Middle School. It's my pleasure to celebrate the class of 2017 on this, the 50th Fieldstone Middle School commencement. We owe special thanks to Dr. Summer and the entire eighth grade team for their tireless work during rehearsals and to Mrs. DeGraw for coordinating the many details. As always, Mr. Pellegrino and I appreciate the support of Dr. Peterson and members of the Board of Education. While I have had only one year to get to know all of you, I've enjoyed being a part of this pivotal year in your academic lives. In determining what to focus upon that might leave an impression on all of you, I reflected deeply. Graduations are transitions, and these milestones give rise to adults thinking about their own related experiences. Of course, I recall the time just a few decades ago when I put closure to my own middle school journey. To go back in time and dissect the differences in the time periods is not fully my intent, but this does bring me to an important point. And if your family is anything like mine, that point has been made hundreds of times around the dinner table, 
relating to phones in conversation and communication. I'm speaking to both family members and graduates when I say the following. The way in which we communicate is one of the most significant societal changes in history. Back in the day, my graduation picture would not have found its way to Snapchat or Instagram. This is fortunate, as the dress I wore was not exactly on the cutting edge of fashion. <laughs> Even for those times, there was a time when moms had a lot of say in the dresses you wore. My telecommunications involved stretching the cord on a kitchen phone to get as far away as possible from six troublesome siblings and curious parents. In contrast, your graduation photos will be widely shared and celebrated, as they should be, and your contact with others will continue to be instantaneous, effortless, and seemingly more private. It's hard to believe that smartphones were not widely available until after 2007, but that has been the bulk of your lifetimes, and their use has driven significant changes in how we interact. The author Thomas Friedman recently published a book entitled Thank You for Being Late, an optimist's guide to surviving in an age of accelerations, in which he characterizes the time during which we are living as an age of exponential change. After an examination of all the ways in which technology is evolving and radically impacting society, he states, I have been struck by how many of the best solutions for helping people build resilience and propulsion in this age of accelerations are things you cannot download, but have to upload the old-fashioned way, one human to another human. Friedman has expressed his strong belief that the occupations in highest demand in the future will be stempathy jobs, those that combine strong science and technology skills with the ability to empathize with another human being. If we consider this employment forecast, I know we've contributed toward preparing you for the future. You've studied solutions related to sustainability in third world countries and examined the causes and human impact of the Holocaust. Your three R's day experiences were formative in meeting this goal as well, and I hope that the stories of the people you met will resonate with you. Mark Miro demonstrated that one can rise above seemingly insurmountable challenges such as poverty and loss and still reach out to others with compassion and encouragement. Alan Moskin, who witnessed the most unspeakable of crimes against humanity during the Holocaust, works to ensure that we won't forget. Hardy Newman, an Iraqi journalist, rights in order to humanize the effects of war. David Kaczynski, whose brother waged terror for many years, works to address the root causes of violence. All of these people have made a difference in the world because of their unfaltering commitment to connecting purposefully with others. We can get the most out of the amazing advances in science and technology if we don't let them distract us from making deep human connections. I encourage you, to consider this. Put down your phones, look up, engage, and make that your focus. You will have access to powerful tools that will enable you to solve problems, compute at unheard of speeds, and gain instantaneous access to information. But know that your greatest influence will lie in your ability to make a difference in others' lives. I wish you all the best in the future, and will miss your energetic presence in the classrooms and hallways of Fieldstone. I am pleased to introduce Dr. Darren Peterson, who will now address the class of 2017. Good evening. On behalf of the Monaco School District, I want to welcome and thank you for being here this evening. Tonight, we celebrate the class of 2017 the 50th graduating class from Fieldstone Middle School. Tonight, we recognize every one of you in this auditorium who has supported the class of 2017. I want to especially thank our eighth grade parents because you were your child's first teachers. I want to thank our administration, especially Mrs. McCormick and Mr. Pellegrino for their leadership and guidance. Thank you to our teachers for inspiring our students and for our staff for all their hard work. And thank you to the Montel Board of Education Montel PTO and the Montel Educational Foundation for your ongoing support. Last week, our eighth graders had an opportunity, opportunity to attend the first ever 
Living Wax Museum at Fieldstone Middle School. The Living Wax Museum was coordinated by our seventh grade social studies teacher, Mr. Victor Conti. Mr. Conti collaborated with the seventh grade team to organize a cross-curricular project for their students. The Living Wax Museum was a collection of visual displays where seventh grade students, dressed up as famous individuals, stood at attention while visitors walked around and toured exhibits. Seventh grade students selected historical figures of the past, both real and mythical. When eighth graders walked up to the dressed up seventh grade student and pressed the button on the Borton, the historical mythical figure came alive. The students shared information about who they were, what time period of history they were from, what they accomplished, and their impact on the world. Visitors learned from our seventh grade students about the past. As I toured the Living Wax Museum, I engaged in conversations with some of our students. I asked them the following question. If a Living Wax Museum was created 100 years from now, and you were included as a wax figure in that museum, what would you want the wax figure to say about you, about the time period in which you lived, about your accomplishments, and about your impact on the world? Now these are some pretty serious questions to think about. Eighth graders, as future wax museum figures, your story is just beginning. As you continue to evolve as a person, it will be important to take the lessons that you learned from Fieldstone with you. Some of these lessons are, surround yourself with good people. Work hard at school. Do not be afraid. Love and live life. Be prepared for each challenge. Keep it simple. And do not get attached to items that have a little value. Mother Teresa once said, I think that a person who is attached to riches, who lives with the worry of riches, is actually very poor. If this person puts his money at the service of others, then he is rich, very rich. Eighth graders, you have the ability to detach from items that do not necessarily bring happiness. You have the ability to build relationships, and by working together, you can make the world a better place. You have an opportunity every single day to do simple acts of kindness for others. In closing, I want to wish each and every one of you success in whatever endeavors you choose to pursue. I firmly believe all of you have a wonderful foundation to build up from your time in Montvale. Your education in Montvale has provided you with a skill set to embrace the different challenges you experience in the future. You don't have to decide right now what a wax figure might say about you 100 years from now, but you should start thinking about some goals for the future and write them down. By writing them down, you're saying that you're serious about your goals. From the moment you set a goal and write it down, you have a much greater chance at achieving it. Therefore, I bring it down this evening to introduce you as the class of 2017. So without further ado, it is my distinct honor and privilege to present to all of you the class of 2017. privilege of introducing the Montvale Board of Education President, Mr. Scott Rossick. That was some pretty sick timing there, guys. I like that. And you know what you looked like when you stood up? You looked like high schoolers. Good evening, everyone. I'm Scott Rossick, I'm the uh, Board of Ed President. It's an absolute pleasure for me to be here to speak to everyone this evening, especially our eighth grade graduating students. I always jump at the opportunity to speak at the graduations. Um, it really is an honor for me. And tonight, it's a special honor because I get to be here with my daughter, Maeve, my beautiful young daughter, who's one of the graduates. Um, 
I want to begin by recognizing parents and family members. As Dr. Peterson said, you're the first teachers. We all work as hard as we can um, to get our children ready for school and to support them when they're in school. But as the board president, I also want to take a minute to um, recognize and acknowledge and thank all of our staff, a lot of whom are, are here tonight. And I'd like to ask that everyone give them a round of applause. I'm always proud to say around town and, and um, in the education community, and I want to say it again here tonight, that we're very blessed to have such dedicated and exceptional educators in our district. So graduates, congratulations. Your teachers, principals, the superintendent, and the Board of Education are all very proud of your accomplishments in Montvale schools. Clearly you've worked very hard, and it's all paying off. Of course, your parents and family members are also proud. And if you're smart, you're going to capitalize on that and you're going to try to get some cash tonight. <laughs> Don't slip. So it's been mentioned that you guys are the 50th graduating class. I thought that was pretty cool when I heard that. Um, so what I did is I took a little bit of a look back um, to the year when Fieldstone opened. And there was a couple of really cool and also interesting things that happened back then. Um, it was a time in the world where um, schools were very different. Schools were at a point where they were actually being fully integrated. Um, people from different races and ethnicities and backgrounds were finally starting to come together and be educated in the same schools with each other. And interestingly, not far from Montvale, um, kids were staging walks at, walkouts from school because they wanted equal rights and the same quality education as their peers. It's hard to believe that that was just 50 years ago. A couple other really cool things that happened back then. The handheld calculator was invented. <laughs> pretty crazy, pretty mind-blowing. And I think kids were able to put those down, unlike the phones. <laughs> This one I love, Doritos were invented. They sounded pretty boring, they were a plain corn chip at first. The nacho cheese came a little bit later. Here's one that I know a lot of you can relate to. 7-Eleven Slurpees became available nationwide. And I know a lot of you take your first trip into town and you head right into 7-Eleven. Couple of um, more serious things. I, I found this very interesting, especially because everyone in my family is, is runners. Um, women were not permitted to run in the Boston Marathon at that time. Um, there was a woman, Catherine Schweitzer, who did, and when she was found out, she was actually pushed off the course. And then this one I loved. Martin Luther King Jr. gave a speech at a middle school the year that this school opened talking to students just like you guys. And the speech that he gave was an abbreviated version of one that he had given earlier in the year in Chicago. Um, and he, and it's, it's now known as his street sweeper speech. And there's a couple things that I wanted to point out from that because I think it sends some really good messages to you guys. One is um, from his speech. He said, I want to suggest some of the things that should begin your life's blueprint. Number one in your life's blueprint should be a deep belief in your own dignity, your worth, and your somebodiness. Don't allow anybody to make you feel that you're nobody. Always feel that you count. Always feel that you have worth, and always feel that your life has ultimate significance. He also said, if your life's work leads you to be a street sweeper, sweep streets like Michelangelo painted pictures, sweep streets like Beethoven composed music, sweep streets like Shakespeare wrote poetry, sweep streets so well that all the hosts of heaven and earth will have to pause and say, here lived a great street sweeper who swept his job well. And then finally, he also said in that speech that there will come a day, 
a day that we all have where we stop and we reflect on our life. And the questions will not be, how many awards did you get in life? How popular were you in your social setting? It won't ask how many degrees you've been able to get. There'll be no concern with whether you have a PhD or a no D. No concern with whether you went to Morehouse College or no college. The question that day will not be, how beautiful is your house? How much money did you accumulate? Or what kind of automobile did you have? On that day, the question will simply be, what did you do for others? It's very profound. His messages are very clear, guys. Love yourself and all of your strengths and weaknesses because we all have them. Work hard no matter what you do and make the most of it and remember that it's people and experiences that mean the most in the world. Think about three R's day, that was mentioned as well. How clear is that day in your mind? I know I came this year and I went home and I said this was absolutely one of the greatest events that I have ever experienced. That day was about people and experiences. That day was about perseverance, humanity, and love. And finally, one last quick story. This is something that happened just a couple of weeks ago. I mentioned that my family loves to run. And my two older kids um, are part of the track team at Pascac Hills. And when we went to the end of the year dinner for the track team, all the seniors, or a lot of the seniors get up and they talk about their experiences over the four years with, with Pascac Hills track. And one of my son's friend gave, got up and gave a speech to his team, his coaches and parents. And one of the most profound things that he talked about during his speech was when they were at a, a race this year and the race was over and a random woman came up to him and said, excuse me, I just want to thank you. You were so nice to my son after the race. You were the only one who stopped to congratulate him. And she said, you know, you guys from Pascac Hills, you're known as the nice team. And I thought that was awesome. Because I think that that really sums up our town. That sums up Montvale. That sums up all of you. And frankly, it sums up the hope that your generation gives to all of us. Understanding what is most important in life, people, experiences, and sharing the love. Carry that with you everywhere you go. Carry that into high school and beyond. So on behalf of the Board of Education and your community, I want to say that we too are very proud of your accomplishment. I hope you guys have an awesome summer, and I wish you all the best in your high school experience. Thank you. teachers will be reading the names of our graduates this evening. We would ask that you would please hold your applause until the last graduate, Nitro, has received his or her diploma, as difficult as I know that will be. <laughs> Ms. Ms. Burweed will begin um, the awarding of diplomas.
Ricky C. DiMaria. Nina Marie Marzocco. Ben Chiara. Amelia Kavashansky. Eric Bernard Golming. Alyssa Lenardin. Viva. Thomas O'Neill. Sohela Shankar. Jack Lynch. Jessica Gooden. Sean McNeese. Samantha Saud, Kyle Butler, Samantha Grisman, Charles Janopoulos, Grayson Catherwood.
Matthew Goldman, Kelly Lynch, Sam Schatzberg, Jenna Golub. Matthew Malnick, 
Maeve Rossi. Orestes Do Campo. Juliana Kubica. Corinne Sood. Maria Perez Martinez. Sam Zayer. Emily Rose Kern. Joseph Ucello. Aaron Alonzo. Dean Boas. Francesca Fontana. Alex Lopez. Brian A. Glazer.
Matias Marillo. <laughs> Elizabeth Masukova. David A. West. Yes, Sarah Chun. Jacob Morales. Ladies and gentlemen, I present the class of 2017. eagerly ready to take flight toward success. To Dr. Peterson, Mrs. McCormack, Mr. Pellegrino, proud families, devoted teachers, and the beloved staff, my sincerest thanks. To start, speaking on behalf of my colleagues, we thank the dedicated teachers who have toiled endlessly to present us with the best of educational opportunities. The Fieldstone Falcons of 2017 have without a doubt grown into a mature group of driven young adults thanks to the greatest of gifts, ironically, obstacles. As John F. Kennedy once stated, when written in Chinese, the word crisis is composed of two characters. One represents danger, and the other represents opportunity. Often, we worry about the upcoming algebra test, or the impending book report, and in that moment of stress, we forget that these tests introduce us to our strengths. Certainly, having such obstacles does create opportunities. Opportunities have been constant at Fieldstone Middle School. We have all been given the gift of exploring the grounds at the local Sterling Salt Mine, venturing through the stories of our soldiers at West Point Academy, but most importantly, and more recently, the unforgettable gift of Three R's Day. Three R's Day is an event during which messengers to humanity who have undergone the inhumanity of history willingly share their stories of despair that amazingly resulted in inspiring outcomes. These accounts of the past all build our character and push us Falcons to fly high. Moreover, the class of 2017 witnessed the culture of our world in fifth grade, the structure of our country in sixth grade, the history of the planet in seventh grade, and our role in society as citizens in eighth grade. All of these opportunities help us soar high in our education. <coughs> education is essential for humanity. It is our greatest opportunity to change the world. Without this gift of learning, undoubtedly, this room would not be a home filled with the students who utilized their desire to learn and their opportunities presented to them that earned them their flowing maroon and white gowns. Certainly, the Fieldstone Falcons of 2017 proudly deemed their middle school of opportunities their home as they prepare to take flight into the new world of high school. Concluding, when opportunity knocks, do not let fear hold you back. Open the door and embrace the chance. After witnessing the growth of our grade, it is obvious that we have opened the door to opportunities. Together we rise, together we learn, together we fly, united as Falcons. 
Thank you to all who have helped us embark on our flight to success, and congratulations to the class of 2017 for their accomplishments in Fieldstone. Let us continue to fly together through the challenges and opportunities that lay ahead. Thank you. our commencement exercises for this evening. Thank you so much for coming. Congratulations once again to the class of 2017 and we look forward to seeing you in school tomorrow. <laughs>